everyone. So this talk won't be quite like other talks you might have seen around. It's uh, going to be very demo heavy and um, it's on 3D web visualization. So uh, congratulations those of you who made it. This is one of DEF CON's uh, unofficial scavenger hunts, finding the talk that isn't listed. Um, so if you're in the audience, you're a winner. And uh, if you're not in the audience and you're watching it on video, well, better luck next time. All right. So I'm Alejandro Caceres. Call me Alex. I'm the owner of Hyperion Gray. I'm the back end developer for the tool that you're about to see. Um, I'm interested in applying distributed computing as it relates to breaking things and finding vulnerabilities in things. So you're going to see a lot of that throughout the talk. It's kind of a theme of mine, if you will. I'm uh, originally a web app pen tester by trade, started focusing on software development after that. So hope you like the tool. Teal? And my name is Teal Rogers. I am a maker and an interface developer specializing in 3D. We're actually a little bit ahead of time. So, um, this is a, uh, it's a 3D visualization of the web, which is, so. You might want to take a second to the slides. They're not on the screen. Not weak. Well, let's see about that. Yeah. There we go. No, it's not really a big deal. We actually just have one slide and then we just get into the demo. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, if you want to read about the problem we're solving. Yeah. It, it should be okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so, once again, congratulations, to those of you who made it. And uh, we're just going to jump right into it, show you the the program, and take you around it a little bit. So this environment is. You know what I can do if it cuts off the edge a little bit, um, I can move this over. I can, yeah, there you go. Does that look good? Yeah, a little bit more. All right, so this is basically our application. It is a it's a 3D environment and what you see here is domains. Domains are represented in as globes with you know graphics and stuff. Um, and when a domain spawns there is <coughs> smaller balls which represent pages. So this is not attempting to reproduce a web browser or anything like that. It is giving metadata for the internet. A, a sort of a view that no one else is doing. Yeah. There's uh, there's things that you can see from this this uh, organization that you can't see anywhere else except by like really digging into your HTML, digging into what your code is, um, doing vulnerability scans using scanning software, which frankly most people don't do. Um, so. We wanted to make it easy to do that. And this is what this is designed to do. Yeah, and right now what you're seeing, all this is running in a test environment of ours. We have about 15 to 20 websites. Uh, some of those websites have various vulnerabilities in them. Some of them have misconfigurations. Some of them just have really messed up configurations, just little things that make it an odd site. So Along with that we do have a few production websites so we'll point those out when, when we go to them. Uh, if you're checking them out like on your smartphone you can see, you can see those. Uh, things like hyperiongray.com, trinarysoftware.com. So some of them are internet facing and some of them are not. So. so the first site we wanted to show you was DC Graphics. And I'll just show you real quick in the, uh, in the web browser. It's a very small site. It's basically a joke site really. It's, it's uh, two posts on WordPress. And I'll just give it a second here to reconnect. See that the connection is right there. Um, so it's a very small site. In our environment, 
we do a crawl in advance and it maps all the links. So you can see a line from one page to another page is a link. And they're all directional because links are directional. So the skinny end is where it's pointing to, the fat end. It's kind of like an arrow. Um, so this is a, this is a typical sort of WordPress site if it's very small. Larger WordPress sites tend to have a core and then an outer core. This one just has an inner core because it's too small to have two cores. Um, so you see the, the cores is these sites here and on the outside you see some feed sites which that's what WordPress does. It creates feed sites. Yeah, so on the back end the crawler is running continuously to keep everything updated. So the goal is to, you know, give you a continuously updated view of the websites that you're seeing. Uh, right now you're actually just seeing a snapshot in time, but the way that it's built on the back end is it's a Hadoop based web crawler uh, slash vulnerability scanner. So we can keep track of, of a ton of websites over a short period of time and the more websites we keep track of, all we basically have to do is scale up a cluster which is really, really easy. Um, and that will shorten our crawling times and, and collection of metadata and all that stuff. So uh, you might recognize that as somewhat similar to like the Google model, how they're collecting metadata and collecting websites and actually the back end is it's an open source implementation of exactly how Google's doing it. So, so here's another site. It's uh, Boonville Lib. It's another joke site really. It's uh, it will spawn in a second here. It's, it's also written in WordPress. It's just a little bit bigger. It's got a few more posts. And in a little bit here you'll notice something strange which is why we're focusing on this one at the moment. It has this link that will appear to a domain called one.gravatar.com and I made this site. Um, and I don't know what one.gravatar.com is. I, I haven't dug through the source code. The, the only way I know that it's there is through this API. See, there it is. See, we don't actually crawl one.gravatar.com. That's why it looks like a distortion. But the, w one of the advantages of, of seeing the metadata of the internet, the internet's underbelly, is, by, is you get to see that there's these weird links all over the place that you didn't even know were there. Even if you made the site, you didn't know they were there. Yeah, by the way, does anybody know what one.gravatar.com is by chance? Anybody want to go to it? Oh, this guy knows. It's the, um, the picture. So your email that you use for your username, you recognize that it goes to Gravatar and hold it in picture. So Great. it's a picture you site. Well. All right. So we needed a 3D map and a dude in the audience that tells us what that was. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So next up, Teal's going to show us. Uh, punkspider.hyperiongray.com. This is an example of a live production site that's out there. Um, has anybody heard of the Punk Spider project by chance? No? Nobody? That guy? No, he was just fidgeting a little. Yeah, my girlfriend. Yeah. Um, so this is Punk Spider. It's a distributed vulnerability search engine, uh, which was kind of a precursor to Web 3.0. Um, it's not in 3D. It's not quite this fancy, but it, it does use uh, on the back end a distributed vulnerability scanner that I wrote. Um, that uh, gives you back vulnerabilities on websites, mu much like Web 3.0 does, which we'll, we'll get into a little bit later. But um, on the back end, Web 3.0 is a little bit fancier than Punk Spider is. Just uh, once, they, it kind of oh. kind of froze up here a little bit. But this is this is a production platform. Whoop, not that one. Um, and uh, we're still tracking down all the stuff. It's really easy to restart it. Yeah. It's Sorry a prototype. To, Sorry to interrupt you. No, you're, you're fine. Thank you. Uh, so I was saying about Punk Spider. Uh, no, I was saying about Web 3.0. So on the back end, uh, we're using a distributed H base back end. So you already might notice the theme here, right? Everything that I write on the back end is completely distributed. So what that means, if, if you're not familiar with, with H base, is it's a uh, huge key value store that runs on a Hadoop cluster. So the more the more keys and values you have, the more you can just uh, scale up your cluster by adding a machine, which again is really easy, takes about a minute to add a machine, um, and makes it infinitely scalable. So the more data we have, just have to scale up our cluster, since actually most of this stuff is in the cloud, that really just takes like 30 seconds to a minute. 
So if you notice sometimes domains disappear, sometimes they reappear, that th this is controlled by interest. Whatever domain you have focused in the center of the view is the domain you're interested in and it's, it's a value that the interface keeps track of just to keep the screen less cluttered and so as domains lose interest, as you're not focused on them, they disappear from the interface and then they reappear. So here we have a vulnerable domain. That's why it's spewing stuff. It's, uh, it's vulnerable to SQL injection. This particular domain we made on purpose to be vulnerable. It's, uh, that's why it's called SQLI1. And uh, you, th this is another thing that you can't really see from just looking at HTML, from looking at your page. You can't see whether, whether your site is vulnerable to hacks. And with our, with our web 3.0 visualizer, you can see an overview of whether you're linked to sites that happen to be vulnerable or whether you just find sites, you know, randomly on the internet. You, you want to know whether they're vulnerable or not for various reasons. Um, and uh, so here we have HyperionGray.com, which is Alex's site. It is uh, yeah. Well, actually, one quick note about the vulnerability scanner. Um, so every site that goes through the system gets scanned for vulnerabilities. Um, the base of the vulnerability scanner right now is done. Uh, it's still pretty basic. Um, it's essentially just a, just a little fuzzer that goes through uh, get parameters. Uh, but of course we're expanding that and making it uh, a much, you know, fancier vulnerability scanner. So uh, the way it works is a little bit unique. The, uh, so a web crawler, when you actually go out and, and crawl sites with a web crawler, you're collecting a ton of metadata on those sites. Uh, what the scanner does is it makes vulnerabilities a completely integral part of that metadata. So you, you essentially don't crawl unless you're looking for vulnerabilities in a site, which is pretty cool. Um, and again, uh, going along with my theme, this is a fully distributed vulnerability scanner. So the more nodes we have in our cluster on the back end, uh, the faster we can scan. So that makes it really useful. Essentially we can, we can scale this up and keep track of uh, not only a map of the entire internet, but we can scan the entire internet for vulnerabilities, which is pretty cool. So as you can tell, uh, Alex is all about the scanner and the vulnerability and I, I'm, I'm focused on the 3D engine. So uh, here we have the Alex's site which is built in Drupal and this is, this is one of the peculiarities you can find with, uh, with Drupal sites sometimes is that, is that you'll find like this area here which is kind of weird URLs that don't really say much, node 26, node 29. And then you'll find um, longer URLs, human readable URLs over here. So Drupal is, is creating these weird little URLs and just forwarding them to the longer ones. And this kind of creates a, a kite, a sort of a main page over here and then a kite in the background, which is really funny actually. But this is, this isn't really the view that you would see as a user of the site. You would see, you would just see this, the stuff on the right. And as a crawler though, as Google, as, as, uh, or as, you know, even somebody collecting information for whatever purposes you might collect information for a site, you would see, uh, you, you'd want to know that, that there's this kind of little odd structure going on here. Because you know information is power. Yeah. So now Teal is going to take us to a uh, site bushofficial.com. So bushofficial is an example of a live production site that we actually do not own. Um, we've just kind of sample crawled the site, so this actually isn't the entire site. Uh, it is the official site of the band Bush. Um, is that, do we have any Bush fans out there? No. Okay. Yeah, I, I've never actually heard Bush, yeah, but I think they're probably a great band. Yeah, and, and we're sure they're um, lovely people. And yeah, lovely people. Yeah. So. So yeah. the system's able to, uh, as I mentioned, in a very non-invasive way, check for vulnerabilities in these sites. Uh, we're doing some really respectful stuff from a network standpoint. Uh, we're respecting robots.txt even during vulnerability scanning throughout the entire thing, uh, and we never flood the site with traffic in any way. So you'll see just a few vulnerable links pop up. Uh, these are URLs in the domain with SQL injection. 
Um, they are real, but don't misuse this. Don't be a dick, I guess is all I'm trying to say. Um, so yeah. Yeah, so you can see Bush is kind of a, a typical site. They, they love MySpace and uh, they, they love Facebook back here even though the labor. And here's Twitter. They love Twitter. And uh, so they're showing a lot of love for social networks which, well, that's pretty typical of a band. Um, Twitter is of course a massive site and we don't crawl it even though it kind of looks like we do. We just crawl if, if they happen to link to it and uh, over here we find someone else who happens to link to it which is Well, the distance is pretty random. You can actually take, um, you can take domains and just drag them around with the mouse. So you can grab Twitter and drag it over here. It's, it's, all, it's all organized dynamically based on whether it's connected to anything that happens to be shown on the screen at that time. So here we have the DEF CON website which is really quite interestingly organized. It is, uh, there's, a, there's a core of pages here which is the main site and then here's a satellite page. So this isn't a full crawl of the DEF CON website or you'd see a bunch of different satellite pages also. But DEF CON is one of the few sites that actually does this on purpose. M many sites do this by accident. So you can see DEF CON shows a lot of love to Facebook. It, it shows a lot of love to uh, Twitter and it shows a little bit of love to Amazon just in this one little URL links slash book list dot html. So you can see where their priorities are. Yeah so we still have plenty of time actually. We will probably have some time for questions in the end. I think Till's just going to show you www.trinarysoftware.com real quick and um, tell you a little bit about how you can get involved with the project. We definitely need your help. So, um, Teal, you want to tell them a little bit about that? All right. So, this is my website that I made in like the last week. And um, if you look at the structure in our Web 3.0 viewer, you see some some really interesting things, actually. And uh, You'll see that, that there's, there's the structure here which is, which is pretty normal. But then there's this like weird little structure off to the side. And this is actually non-www.trinarysoftware.com. So what I've done and I haven't corrected it just so that you can show. I have I've, I've accidentally, this is a purely organic uh, mistake here, um, linked some of my pages to, the, to a different domain, a non-www domain. And um, as far as like Google is concerned, this is like a big no-no. And uh, I, I, Google's kind of like the government of the internet, so to speak. And um, so this sort of, uh, sort of mistake you can make will often get you Google find. And I made up that term. I'm, I'm hoping it sticks, but um, that, that isn't an actual term. But so th th it's, a, it's a good example of why you would, you would want to get a map of your website because if you just crawl manually through your own, um, through the web browser, examine your HTML, you're very likely to miss the fact that you stuck some of the pages in a non-www format. Now fortunately my site doesn't have any SQL injection vulnerabilities on it or uh, you'd be able to see that as well. So what we have here, what this software is, is it's a prototype. It's, it's under active development and um, there's a lot of directions that we could take this. We want uh, our friends to get involved and by our friends I mean all of you guys. We want, uh, so what we've done, what I've done is um, we've made this, uh, we've made a mailing list for now. So if, if you, on the site, on trinarysoftware.com, you can sign up for a mailing list and we're going to be offering everyone who is on the mailing list in a month 
or probably two months, um, free access to the closed beta. So we're, we're, we really want you to be involved and for contractual reasons we, we can't really offer an open beta but we, we want to offer everyone here free access to the closed beta. Yeah, and for the back end engine actually I'm releasing this uh, free and open source under the Apache license so you can do whatever you want with it. Um, I know Teal's also going to offer a, a, a free version of this when, when it does actually come out. Um, yeah, and thanks for coming. Uh, one last note, if you're interested in offensive techniques in distributed computing, uh, my talk's, uh, I have another talk here that's coming up at 3 p.m. at track one. So definitely catch that if that sounds like something that's interesting to you. Um, and thanks for coming. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> we actually have about five minutes where we can take some questions. Where do you go to opt in for the beta? It's uh, www.trinarysoftware.com. T R I. Uh, well, <laughs> here it is, right here, actually. Right on the top there. <laughs> so it, it. It's actually very simple. Uh, it, it's uh, T R I N A R Y. Try Nary. Like, like three Narys. All right. Um, so. <laughs> Trinary, soft, you, you know, trinary software is a technically meaningless term in almost any kind of functional sense unless you, uh, unless you think of it in terms of 3D. So that's really the only way that you could take what is, uh, you know, what is a trinary software. It's, it's a 3D software. Other questions? What? Uh, so actually it's a customized version of a crawler called Apache Nutch um, which is where the Apache Hadoop project actually came from. It spawned from Apache Nutch. So we've customized it, added a bunch of plugins on the back end and again releasing all that stuff open source after. So. Yeah. When will you be showing off the crawler? I will be showing off a, a little bit more about the crawler and vulnerability scanner in my talk at 3 p.m. in track one. Thanks John. Anybody else? Yeah. Have you thought about rendering in 3D and like using a leak motion to control it? Uh, using what kind of motion? Uh, leak motion is a thing that can actually attach hands. Yeah. Um, it, it could, we can use like biofeedback and leak motion and um, that is actually really easy to plug in and that's a direction we can take this. We're, we're trying to, Figure out what directions we we want all all the good uh, suggestions like that 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 we can get and any kind of uh, you know contributions any kind of input um, that anybody can get feel free to email us or our our emails are listed on our website um, or uh, you know if you have any any ideas or or you have a project that this would um, Really interrelate, interrelate with would uh, it would be very helpful. Yeah, we definitely are hoping to get a little back and forth with the community. I mean, we really want to make the community kind of an integral part of where we take this entire thing. So um, definitely, if you have ideas or you just want to talk with us or have any additional questions, yeah, shoot us an email. Uh, follow me on Twitter dot slash punk on Twitter, uh, or come to my talk again at 3 p.m. on track one. <laughs> All right. Thank you for coming. Thanks, everybody.